You're going to be more distinct, more regular, and slower. My God, you're not going to do anything. <laughs> you have no choice. You want to be this way. And you better examine your activities to be sure you're that way. Just invert the argument. You begin to see the beauty of it when you invert it. Because that's going to permit you to do these things. As a matter of fact, that, you know, that those kind of things permit you to get inside his oodle. Or get inside his mind kind of thing. In other words, penetrate his moral, mental, physical being. You're going to get right inside his system. You got it. And you start holding rigid ideas, rigid ways of operating. You're not going to get that off your Mere fact that you want to look at your adversary's philosophy, you want to understand what he operates. That doesn't mean you have to, but you have to understand it from his viewpoint. Most. Most. And then I will give you the opportunity to study. Of course, then. You see the underlying idea. Of course. Not only did Sun Tzu imply that, but it recognized it. And look at those Ludendorff's infiltration at least in a physical sense. As a matter of fact, for you people who read Little Heart, you want to read a much better book. Little Heart Sun Tzu, I think it's a lot of garbage here. I'm glad to explain why I am. Read Fuller's book, The Conduct of War from 1789-1961. Very nice stuff there. Politic politically so, too, for your people. Too. Very nice stuff. Very introspective guy. How many people read a little hearts to strategy indirect approach? Remember we talked about the indirect approach to mean a dislocation, dislocation and indirect approach. My God, he's got circular reasoning. He's gonna dislocate a guy's mind. You don't dislocate a mind, you disorient. Talk about dislocation, wedges, lying. Tracy's a chiropractor at war. <laughs> you know, you have, to, you have to understand the fact that the way he uses words, as you can tell, he doesn't understand it. You don't dislocate him, right? Disorientation. You start thinking about disorientation, what kind of things is that? How do you do it? He didn't even come to grips with that. He might not say it that way, but he. You see that kind of stuff, that's good. Okay, that's why I want I, I think it's important thing. In any case, I finally got there. So if you want to know when we're gonna look at it the other way. So it raises these questions naturally since we've gone all the way. How can we counter it what's likewise a growth movement? So let's look into it. Now remember earlier we showed a chart that talked about this kind of phenomenon. In fact, one hand, you know, you're trying to the irregular. On the other hand, you're trying to go deep, you're trying to adapt, and we made a point similar to this. It was difficult to sustain fast tempo and then force to do all the shifting and also trying to go deep. That's correct. And that is a vulnerability, but you want to play upon that. So let's look at a counterpoint. So one chart, a one chart snapshot. I'll let you read it and I'll comment. And I want to see if there's a certain view that comes out of it after you read it. Some people pick it up. You probably all do. Some people are able to and you just say it more directly too. But there's a notion I want to drive home here after you read it too. up here. Think of areas, regions, and zones. Remember, terrain doesn't weigh more than machine zone. You don't try to defend terrain, you use the terrain as a medium for maneuver. You try to set yourself to do it. You have your intelligence operation, no gear, deploy, disperse, and a different way to disperse. Remember, you have to do that. If you set up one way, you keep setting up that same way, or set up a certain way, you keep it that way, pretty soon, enemy intelligence and directly activity can discern what you're up to. So you want to change those deployment and dispersal routines as long as you can still form your own local main effort because you're feeding them a basketball fog all the time. In other words, race is uncertain. 
And that's how you do it. But the Army says you, you want to deprive your adversary the opportunity to sand table. In other words, if you're sitting in the same position recently, lay out sand tables, lay out all kinds of delicate attacks trying to get in your system. But if you keep changing it, Christ ain't never going to lay out the sand table. So you're going to lay out a nice articulated attack against because you're very amorphous, you're very uncertain, and just can't get a good image or picture of what you're up to. And third, your reserve. And it raises an important question. What the hell do you want reserves for? Clausewitz said it very well. Two out of the three. Two. One, it's a hedge against what? Uncertainty. You don't know exactly what's going to happen, so you need uncertainty in order to deal or adjust to un unforeseen circumstances. That's one reason. Another reason, by having reserves, you also keep the operation going. In other words, you don't get all tired out where your people are. You put reserves up and bring the other guys back in the reserves so you can maintain the tempo or sustain operation. And there's a third reason. You also, since you have the reserve, your adversary doesn't know how you're going to use it, you build uncertainty in his camp. So he can't cope. He doesn't know how you're going to use it. So then, your action. You want to begin the erosion action and also, on him at the same time the first call here, try to get an image or a picture of what he's up to. Don't step in here and take him on right away. I see it too often in the Pentagon. We do certain things to him, like you probably all know him, the social reform movement. We do certain things to him, Christ didn't react right away, we cut him up. If they were smart, they'd try to step back and try to suck us in. If you react too fast tactically, you may lose a fantastic strategic opportunity. Sometimes you want to deal tactically so you get a big strategic grab. In any case, you get that picture. Remember, we're not trying to defend the train, we use the medium to remove it. Then, with that information, you can start allocating your people, start feeding them into those sectors that lie adjacent to the oncoming thrust. In other words, you can dig locally into their flanks and rear, cut off their supply efforts, etc. That doesn't mean you'll make it, because they know probably you're going to do some of that stuff, so they'll put out flank guards, particularly there's a lot of troops coming through there, and they may stop you. But then you have these reserves back there, you can swing in a deep flank canister up and roll up. So you, while they're hitting you with many happenings, you can hit them with many counter happenings. Roll them up and rear. Yeah, you get the What does all this suggest? Anybody? Let me just say, what does it all suggest? Like the Say, what you do, it's a reverse play. And in a sense, you have an advantage. Remember, he's coming into your territory. You know it better. All you got to do is just don't lose your nerve. And don't worry about defending the terrain. You should train as a medium for maneuvers. So you take out his force. You know it better. But if you say, God, I'm going to defend this way of ground, it's plain and There might be some areas you have to defend. She's a fighter pilot. I can't step out and capture that cloud. <laughs> my whole world's a world of maneuver. If I don't do it right, I'm going to get taken out. That's why when I first got this stuff, I said, these ground people have got here. They're all just that tax of that piece of ground. What the hell with them? Let it go and take them out. Then I started reading about the, all these German blitz commanders. Other people. That's what they're doing. It seems to work. Why don't we do that? You can't get to a See, they think, well, we're moving backwards. That's what that ball around the defense. Like, no, as long as you have the initiative. I don't care if you move backwards, forwards, sideways, any other direction. You have to use that terrain so you can take out the force, then you get it all back. There's many successful people who have done that. In fact, Manstein was one of the successful practitioners of that. Go ahead. Well, what would you label the terrain as political? Hmm? What would you label the terrain as political? Well, you're talking about the population or people out there. That's the terrain you're going to be working with. And your adversary may be doing certain things there, and you might let you might lead them success, but as long as you know there's a horrible contradiction there, and you lead them in there, you want to get them in deep. Because if you only does a little bit, and you move back, then he makes the adjustment. If you get him in deep and can't make the adjustment, then he discredits himself. I mean, down the tube. See, because I've seen people do it. I've even seen some of the TV programs now make a mistake, and I said, God, you got to really drag him in deep now, and the guy makes a comeback, and the guy gets out of it. No, suck him in. Reinforce, let him get in real deep, and then 
There's no way out. He's never said Come back too soon. You want to, when you see him, say, hey, I've got to get this guy a deeper. He loves it. I've got to feed him some more success. Would you give him a tactical success for a strategic disaster? You want to start, you've got to think about it. Remember, you got to, when you do it, you, you got to think it through. You know there's a paradox here, and you leverage it. You've got that paradox. 